Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's 11 a.m., not quite 10 a.m. ish, uh, but we've been doing things behind the scenes this morning. Anyway, my name is Graham Day, and I'm joined by the man that we call Baby. Nice. Sorry, I was finishing the second <laughs> I was going to say, nice <laughs> I, <couldn't, laughs> I couldn't swig it fast enough. <laughs> oh, it's a bit dark here, actually. I've not turned my lighting on. Uh, whoop. There we go. Bit better. Bit better. Um, Anyway, yes, welcome to the stream. We are live on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. My name is Graham Day, as I mentioned. This is Bibby, who's, you know, got a world-class brew, as you can clearly tell. We're all jealous. No. <laughs> um, and we are, together we are ice cream. And this, in ice creamy fashion, is The Scoop, the UK's number one video game podcast. Even if we do say that ourselves, but we are bringing you the biggest, the best, and the breaking stories from the world of video games. We want your thoughts and impressions because we're going to give you our thoughts and impressions on all the breaking video games news. We want your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions. That's how it works. And I've got a sweet in my mouth, so apologies if I sound a bit special, but bad timing. Put it in my mouth just as we went live. Great, great. Well done, Graham. Anyway, if you are live, like I said, feel free to get involved in the chat because uh, we turn this into a YouTube video that we upload a little bit later on in the day and then we turn it into an audio podcast which we're part of in four different places as well. So if you are uh, here live on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads, feel free to get involved because everyone watching on demand can, can enjoy at leisure but they don't get the ability to chat to Bibi directly in the chat like you guys do. So use it, use the opportunity. Uh, good morning, Bacon Chin. Let's go. And then what's the other one, babe? <coughs> Hello. Yeah. Oh, pff. oh God, what was that? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Hello. There we go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wait, you're at Calvin Klein. Uh, I'm, yeah, I just need someone with a southern accent to keep calling me Mr. Klein now. Mr. Klein. <laughs> Half fast hello that. Yeah. Do, do you know what? I think. Do you know what? We're gonna sit here. We're gonna sit here. I'm gonna wait for him to just do one. Proper one. That that was a good one. No. That that was that was like dragging for the back of my throat. That you're asking a lot, yeah. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yes. Uh, please, I'll say when it's good. I think I think we can. I think we can agree that one was decent. Better. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, good morning. Welcome to the show. As obviously, as mentioned, we we usually go live at around ten ish. We kind of a bit loose uh, with all of the, the COVID stuff that's going on uh, because you know all of the stuff. Uh, but we were kind of on point to go live uh, around ten ish today. But we've been tweaking. So those of you that may have tuned in the last couple of days, we've been doing our uh, Modern Master League discussions, and we're I think we're almost there now. I think we're just about there. Bibby's been working his ass off with with Speak of the Devil with Chucky Boy one two three four who's in the chat. Uh, Bibby and Chucky have, have been tweaking so we can get our stuff that we want within the game. Uh, I've been tweaking the broadcast side of things, and I think we're almost there. I think we're just about there. So yeah, um, I'm starting it on Monday. Is, sounds, that the, is that the day when we're going to go live? That sounds good to me. It sounds good to me. Yes. Yeah. So if if you if you have nothing better to do and you want to watch two. To sad sacks, <laughs> play football games. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, nah, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. Uh, do you know what we should we, we should probably jump on some promo material stuff. You know, getting some some content out there and giving some teasers. That, that's next. That's next. Keep your eyes on Twitch TV forward slash Ice Cream Uploads for the full show. But Twitter dot com slash Ice Cream Uploads if you want to see some of the teaser stuff. We'll probably put some. I mean, we've, we've kind of told you previously that we're using green screeny stuff, but if you want to see some of the screens and some of the scenes that we'll be using, we'll start to try to put some nice teaser bits out for you guys over the next few days. So check it out, check it out. Uh, let me just type exclamation mark socials. Oh, capitals. Socials! <laughs> exclamation mark socials in the chat. There is no links. <laughs> right, one sec. I've got a chat bot on my PC. Let me just log it in. Um... <clears throat> So as Bibby's logging in, I will jump in with the news. And I promise I didn't pick the first news story of the day. Bibby chose it, but, you know, you're going to think it's me anyway. It's actually a good one. It's a good one. It's a good one. It is. And if you are... I don't know what it is anyway, if you what, found it or found us on our socials. Yeah, exactly. Um, and the post on the socials that Bibby references says this. Google Stadia gets PUBG with Star Wars, Madden and FIFA arriving this this year PUBG is free for stadia pro subscribers written by tom warren for the verge and it'll be i'll be just going to go uh, download stadia again uh, so download stadia yeah that's what you do uh, anyway um google is 
So again, Google is bringing Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, aka PUBG, to Stadia today, and it's promising to launch several EA games later this year. PUBG will be free for Stadia Pro members and will include the new Cold Front Season Pass. Stadia Free members will be able to purchase the base game for $29.99 or bundled with the Season, uh, season Pass for $39.99. PUBG on Stadia will also support crossplay, so you can play against friends on console, which is kind of bizarre to me. But then again, I suppose you, they do want you to use the controller as opposed to mouse and keyboard bits. Anyway, it's not that bizarre. Never mind. Carry on, great. Google appears to be launching one of its promised Stadia features with PUBG today: the ability to click a game link and instantly play. You can follow this link if you're a Stadia Pro member, and it should instantly launch the game. It's something we'll likely see used a lot more in YouTube videos to promote Stadia games. Alongside the PUBG launch, Google is partnering with EA to bring Star Wars Jedi Fall, uh, Fall, blah, 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 blah. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. There we go. Madden, NFL, and FIFA to Stadia later this year. There are no exact release dates for all of these three titles. Although Google did say that Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order will arrive this fall, while Madden and FIFA will be available this winter. Google is also planning to launch Crater exclusively on Stadia this summer, free for Stadia Pro members. Crater is a collaborative game creation and sharing platform powered by Unreal Editor 4, and players of varying skill levels will be able to build multiplayer games with Crater. Co-op game Get Packed is also launching on Stadia today, priced at $19.99, with campaign and versus modes for up to four players. May's Stadia, program, uh, May's Stadia Pro games include Zombie Army 4 Dead War, Steam World Heist, and the Turing test uh, that are all claimable on May the 1st. Thumper will be leaving Stadia Pro at the end of April. Update, April 28th, 1.50pm. Added specific release for Mischief Eddie Stadia's games. Nice. Um, so there we go. PUBG coming to Stadia today. Madden, FIFA, and what was the other one? It's completely out of mind. Uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, because I couldn't say that's what it's going to mind. Are uh, coming later in the year. Not bad. Not bad. Thoughts, you know, it's again another step in the right direction. I love the fact, uh, I say, tone it down a little bit. I like the fact that they're giving PUBG away for free if you are part of their subscription service because at the moment there doesn't seem to be a massive incentive to be a Stadia Pro member, barring the fact that you can play uh, Destiny 2 and some of the free games that they've been giving away uh, over the last couple of well, last couple of months, like over the last six months since it launched, that the, their showing has been quite poor when it comes to giving away games. Is this the biggest game around at the moment? Yes, PUBG? yes, it is. Yes, it is. In some people's minds, yes, it is. <laughs> um, in the grand scheme of things, is this going to be the game that draws people to want to be able to upgrade their membership to a Stadia Pro member? I, th I think it's probably 70 30. I think the people who love PUBG would pull the trigger and become a pro member again uh, if it wasn't already free at the moment. I think it's still free. Did they say they get like three months free at the moment uh, to everyone while they're being, being able to play at home? I think it was something along them lines anyway. So if you, if you for the next three months, if you are a PUBG player, perfect. Is it going to make you want to extend that membership? If you've got it on other consoles, maybe not, but it's a nice thing to have if you are a portable gamer. Not that we're getting a lot of that at the moment anyway. Um, Fallen Order, Fall Order uh, NFL, uh, Madden and FIFA are all coming to the console again. Amazing if it uh, if you are going to be travelling later down the line and you do love a good career mode or playing pro clubs or whatever it may be uh, on that or a bit of Ultimate Team on the go. So though, they are big games that are coming to, uh, to Stadia and the fact that they've kind of got the backing now of EA, um, the likelihood is we are going to be seeing more EA games coming to this platform. Are we going to see more Dragon Age? Are we going to see Mass Effect? Are we going to see um, uh, Christ knows what else? Uh, Battlefront is that was that coming as well? Battlefront? Or uh, was it just falling order for the time being? Yeah, it wasn't coming here. No, not in this. First yeah. Thing. So it, potentially we might end up seeing um, Star Wars Battlefront. We may end up seeing uh, Battlefield. We don't know, but it looks like EA are now uh, cooperating with Stadia, um, and that is a massive, massive massive coup for them because um, that just opens the door for the likes of Ubisoft cool. um, maybe well Bethesda already have Doom coming to it as well so we're going to see more Bethesda game it's perfect for them um, and it's definitely going to get it's going to be in the more minds of more people now because these games are massive games regardless of what you think of FIFA NFL um, in terms of loot boxes and things like that the franchises are massive and it just opens another door to uh, the audiences of those games yeah I think I mean the PUBG bit, 
I like because I like PUBG. Um, but your point of is it going to be the one that's going to make much difference? Uh, it's like we've, we spoke about before. PUBG is still a massive game. Um, people are quick to talk it down, just like they're quick to talk Pokemon Go down. Oh, you still play that? Yeah, there's still billions of people, uh, millions of people that play it. Not not the billions or whatever it was that played it at launch, but there's still more than pretty much any other game out there on a mobile phone being played on uh, on Pokemon Go. So yes, people still play it in that sort of sense. Yes, people still play PUBG. Shitloads of people still play PUBG. Um, not as many as in its heyday. But the thing is, the game is out. Like we were talking about the other day, it's been out in its kind of like full release for two years. It's been around for four or five years. Um, so anyone that is interested in PUBG and playing PUBG will already have access to PUBG. Um, mm. Will already be playing that on a console or a PC already. Would they then go out to buy a game that? is already established that they will already be playing there's got to be very few people that are interested in playing PUBG that have thought do you know what actually I, I, I'll give it a go now right now on, on an yeah. unproven uh, bit of software I mean, the, the thing within the artwork on the article there it says it, it I'll, I'll show it on screen again um, uh, I don't know if you can see it there but it says player unknowns battlegrounds pioneer edition on the artwork with it I mean one thing I've I've learned from playing uh, PUBG on two different formats, uh, well three if you include Xbox and PlayStation separately, um, PC and console, is that being a pioneer in the world of PUBG is not necessarily something great because <laughs> <'cause> you, <laughs> you get there first, but you get all the shit with it, and it takes them a long time to sort out. So mm. I, I wouldn't see uh, going to be a, uh, play the pioneer edition of this as something that. But then again, that's me. That's me. Okay, step away from it, Graham. There could be people out there that have, that have said. Yeah, my PC's not good enough, and I don't play on console, so this gives me an opportunity to try get the middle ground. It's kind of mm -hmm. PC level of graphics potentially with console uh, gameplay using the controller. So, yeah, maybe maybe it could be good. Maybe it could be good. I do think what you were saying about the the massive coup of getting EA on board. That's kind of the bigger thing. Although I did notice this as well. Star Wars Jedi Fall Order will arrive this fall. Clearly, that's <laughs> clearly that's got in the mindset. Um, but yeah. Jedi Fallen Order, I think is good. Uh, one, it's a Star Wars game. Two, and more crucially for Stadia, it's a single player game. It doesn't re re rely on that that online connection stuff. So we we were speaking before saying, doing grindy bits. I say when I said before, I think it was like December. Uh, someone's hands-on analysis of Stadia after playing it for a while was that doing playing Destiny and stuff like that, do, doing raids and so on. Not the greatest. The connections weren't weren't superb for that. But but playing football manager or whatever, something where you can grind and you don't need to be on the button with your timed reactions, but you can do stuff that that would keep adding to your story. Uh, so say if you're out on the go, if you're away with work, if you're visiting somewhere, if you're on holiday or whatever, you can do the 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 not tedious. I don't want to use the word tedious, but the more less less responsive tasks you can do that and you can fly through that stuff so when you get back to your home you can do that stuff there so that's where he was kind of saying the benefits is uh for stadia at least in its early guises that was like a couple of months old yeah um so adding star wars jedi fallen order which is obviously a story game it's not that uh multiplayer where you need split second reactions fine i'm adding nfl and fifa yes you, you do have the multiplayer elements of those which are probably the main elements but you also have the likes of Ultimate Team within there. If you just want to play as... People always joke about being a menu streamer or a menu player. If you just want to open packs and do that side of things for Ultimate Team, knock yourself out. If you want to do a career mode, knock yourself out. Uh, so those those three games are good for Stadia because they, don't, they aren't based on pixel-perfect like precision headshots within split seconds that you would if Call of Duty launched. If you're playing the new Warzone Battle Royale launch and, and so on. I think that, so. I think that's pretty decent there. Mm, I agree. Uh, it, again, uh, the the EA coming on board and saying you can have three of our biggest franchises says a lot. And it says a lot about what they deem Stadia to be like in the future. We've we've been saying it from day one. Yeah, we've criticised it every single opportunity that we get to have it because at the moment it's been justified. But if they make changes to the way that they potentially market it, if they have the infrastructure to be able to um, change the perception of what people think 
of the game um, and the console itself and we get a better experience while playing it because at the moment the experience that I've had, fair enough, the experience was four months ago and things may have changed since then but it wasn't a great experience to begin with and that's exactly what people are paying for. If you're getting into a brand new console cycle, a new ecosystem in the console world, regardless of whether or not it's portable uh, or home console gaming, it needs to be good from the get-go. If it's not, then you're going to end up for failing as soon as you even begin um so hopefully hopefully this will be the start of something for them because it, it is a fantastic idea i mean i love my nintendo switch i can play it wherever i want i can play it downstairs in the front room or i can play it on a plane on the way to wherever i'm going that's perfect fair enough i can't do that with the stadia but i can almost certainly be able to play it wherever i go to without having to cart around my massive playstation 4 controllers wires games the lot it's just in the cloud plug my dongle in and I'm ready to go. That's a perfect experience. Unfortunately, at the moment, the experience has been hindered by the way that the, the, the infrastructure's, um, you know, outputting the games to us. So, yeah, if the if the big back if the big hitters all do get involved uh, and they see something that we can't at the moment, then uh, is PUBG going to be the game that gets you there? No, but there will be games down the line that will get you there. Yeah, so <clears throat> jumping on that, is PUBG going to get you there? Jumping in the chat, Fatman Dave says, I think it's too little, too late. They should have had them earlier uh, or launch when people were still hyped and would forgive some technical issues. Then Baker Chin, in response, says, do you feel they will use the launch of PUBG as a relaunch uh, for Stadia? Uh, Fatman Dave says, strange things have happened. They need something that's going to do something to change the image they have so far. It will be like No Man's Sky and takes ages to get the goodwill back. Um, do I think PUBG is strong enough to relaunch stadia probably not do i think pubg would have been strong enough to relaunch stadia in its heyday possibly possibly very very much so fortnite uh, has changed the world fortnite has launched epic games um so one game at its peak providing it's the game at its peak uh, is strong enough to launch uh, to launch and carry a system uh, providing there's a level of quality there if if the game is uh, if the system is strong enough to play the game eff effortlessly and flawlessly, then PUBG could have been that game, but not right now. PUBG is having its issues in its own community in terms of consistency and sorting out the bugs and things like that. So, I mean, I imagine I, I'll look at it. So I've got an itch in my nose. I, I imagine I'll, I'll look at it uh, after we're off the scoop, and I'll see PUBG fans complaining about the fact that. PUBG's devs are looking at creating a way for PUBG to play on Stadia and adding yet more servers and more complexity to game pools and stuff like that. Yes, they'll add more users, admittedly not many, because there's not many players on, on uh, yeah. Stadia, but a lot of PUBG fans are already angry at the fact that they keep adding more content and not fixing the base content that it's lying on. They're getting the balance wrong. They're, Look at all the new stuff to keep making people spend money as opposed to just making it work. Um, so PUBG has that issue already. This will just probably add a little bit of salt to the wounds for PUBG players, um, but I can't see it being strong enough to to carry uh, Stadia. Definitely, definitely not enough of a relaunch. If you got Jedi Fallen Order and PUBG and Madden and FIFA uh, plus all the other games that they mentioned at the same time, yes, that's it. That's a decent relaunch. But then, what are you going to follow it with? The thing is, there that you can see that that they can't class that as a relaunch because PUBG is coming now. And then they've announced three games for later in the year. Yes, there is, is other stuff, and I'll put this one on screen now. This is Crater, which I'd never even heard of uh, before now. Well, let me just mute it, because that's quite loud. So this is Crater. This is their game creator program. When I, I'd never even heard of it. Uh, I What I had in mind was um, either Mario Maker or Minecraft or... Uh, dreams and it actually looks a bit more minecrafty it just is this is this gonna is this gonna launch steam it looks now i'm looking at it it looks like it's a better polygon version of minecraft minecraft with fortnite characters that's what it is uh fortcraft mine night creator this is uh, uh i believe it was a stadia exclusive it was mentioned within the article so i just clicked on it to see what yeah, what, what's the actual purpose of the game, though? What's the, what, what is the game? You create games. 
So that's where I, I had... Ah, uh, okay. I had... Uh, so Google is also planning to launch Creator exclusively on Stadia this summer, free for Stadia Pro members. Creator is a collaborative game creation and sharing platform powered by Unreal Editor 4. And players of varying skill levels will be, will be able to build multiplayer games with Creator co-op game. So there we go. So you can basically build, build games, which is either Mario Maker or Dreams or Minecraft. It's something like that. That's kind of what I was... Uh, Looking at, looking at, uh, thinking of now looking at it, it looks like Fortnite meets Minecraft, probably with a bit of Mario Maker in terms of building levels of it. it it's good, it's cool, it crosses many boundaries, but it's not going to set the world on fire. Um, mm. So, oh. okay, ignore that. Um, so it's not, it's not going to set the world on fire. It's, it's, it's nice to have, but the, but the point I was getting at is, okay, you've got PUBG, and then you've got three other games from EA coming in winter, uh, well, autumn and winter, fall and winter, as it says in the article. So we've got all of summer with only games like Creator. I know uh, this is a shit comment. I completely understand what I'm saying, only games like Creator. Uh, this is coming from my my own snobby opinion, but just bear with it. Uh, so only games like Creator and Steam World Heist and, and the, the Turing Test. I've never heard of these games so they could be world class games but if I've never heard of them then they just aren't doing for whatever reason it is be it, be it the game's not good enough be it the game just doesn't have the marketing power be it, it just doesn't resonate with all people and might resonate with some these games aren't going to be enough to plug the gaps if PUBG is the relaunch then they have such a long period of time before they have hard hitting big marketing uh, AAA titles that they can add to the roster mm. so it's good. It is good. Don't get me wrong. It is. It is good for Stadia. Finally, if you've got Stadia and you want something to do, PUBG is a good grindy game. If you're into that kind of thing, you will have fun with that. But you will have to then make do with what's there until what September, October, when we when we get the new yeah. Maddens and Fifas, and then uh, or whenever Fallen Order or Fallen Order will come before those. So August maybe you might get Fallen Order. Well, that's a week, <laughs> and then you yeah. just just gotta wait until October, November to get the other ones. So it's good. It is good. I know I'm, I'm being a bit shit now. I'm starting to rip it, rip it down. The more I talk about it, the more I, th I always think, yeah, yeah, shakes fist. But yeah, it it is good that Stadia is adding things, and it will be good for people uh, that want something different to do right now. Um, it's not going to be enough to sustain you for the long haul. But let's just hope this is one of a few messages. Maybe maybe this is the uh, PUBG slash EA message, and they might have a Ubisoft message announced for next week. And then, and if that's the case, then yes, then that, even though it's not a relaunch, I could see that working well for them. Well, the, the thing about this is that there are still people out there that's a subscription for this because they are people who do travel the world or work away quite a lot and even in this climate people still have to work we still have key workers and there is still companies that uh there's a company that that i live behind uh, and they've recently gone back to work and they um make blinds so you wouldn't think that that's a a place where it would be a necessity to open it but funnily enough it's open and people have gone back to work there so um i imagine the people who are the hat that do travel and work out work away if they do have one they will still be subscribed and they will still be actively playing their stadium whether it's at home or away so it, it will cater for those people especially if they're getting a, a free game because it's been tagged onto the top of their already uh subscriber they are they already fuck me the subscription <laughs> that they've already bought and uh jesus Forgetting words now. Boots and cats and boots. Yeah. <laughs> so they're already in the ecosystem of Stadia, and they was already paying for it. They're getting an extra game on top of the content that they was already getting. Is the way is the scenario I was looking for there? But yeah, it's it's good for the people that are already there, um, and it, the fact that PUBG is going to be a free game technically is great, and the fact that we've got EA on board now as well is all. But again, the future is looking a little bit better for Google Stadia. Um, again, I, I am looking forward to getting back into the office and trying it again just to see what it, the difference is between five. Well, try stones, it might be 12 months by the time we get back into the office uh, from the last time that I played it. So hopefully you'll see some significant improvements since then, especially with the internet connection speed that we've got in the office. It's, uh, it's ridiculously fast and I was still having massive slowdown on it. So we'll see. Uh, Bacon Chin says... Uh... Hey, I'm listening to the uh, 
Oh, the, the ice cream remix. Thank you yeah. very much. Yeah, yeah, the ghetto ice cream, man. That's the one. Thank you very much for the uh, raid, Drake. How are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning, sir. Yay. Yeah. We're currently talking about Google Stadia finally getting some some games. Scorpio, raid hype. Thank you very much, everyone. What what, what have you been doing in Drake's screen? Uh, scream? Stream. Scream. There we go. Scream. <laughs> hey, Scorpio, thank you very much for the follow as well. Very much appreciated. Welcome in. Welcome in. We're currently talking about... Um, oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 actually, let's let's break. Let's break. Let's go to some personal news. There we go. Uh, the, uh, the reason I've gone to personal news is because it actually directly relates to the stream. I've just seen an email pop up then. I got completely off topic. Bear with me. Uh, I got a penalty charge notice, a.k.a. I got a, a parking fine for parking in a Tesco car park uh, the other week. I, I apparently stayed in this Tesco car park for seven hours. <laughs> uh, all day! Big shot. Uh, the reason it's relevant is because it was actually a day where I was streaming, so I used this show as evidence to show that I wasn't actually in the car park, and they've just come back and gone, sorry, we'll, we'll rescind the fine. Yay, goddamn right you will! Uh, but but there you go, I, I, am, I am... Please accept our sincere apologies. Fine. Fine. There we go. But anyway, anyway, we are talking about Google Stadia. Uh, finally, finally getting some good games. It's probably not going to be enough to satisfy your itch if you want to use that as your platform of choice for all of your uh, gaming. But, you know, if you like PUBG, they've got that. If you want to play some Star Wars, they'll have Jedi Fallen Order coming later in the year. And if you're into sports game, EA Madden NFL and EA Sports FIFA both will be coming uh, in winter too. So better uh, from Stadia in terms of three, well, four big titles there coming, should I say, plus exclusives like Creator, which is a world creator, Get Packed, uh, which is launching today, and they've already got more games coming to Pro, including Zombie Army 4, uh, Steam World Heist, and the Turing Test. So Stadia, Stadia pulling out a little bit, probably, like I say, probably not enough, um, and it doesn't mean anything if the platform still plays shit. We can't hype. Uh, we can't hype. We can't uh, verify that because our uh, setup, as Bibbs just mentioned, is in the office, and we are well, for for um, social distancing. Not going to be touching it for a while, so we can't tell you if it's decent. But if anyone does try it, please please feel free to let us know. Uh, Nino Kuni and R earlier today. Oh, nice. Uh, should have asked for the the fine with food supplies. <laughs> I did, I did. It wasn't actually, I mean, it's not actually Tesco. Uh, we have uh, uh, a bunch of scammy companies called, uh, well, this one is called Horizon Parking Limited. Basically, they're subcontractors that get the rights to man car parks. There's a bunch of companies like this. They're not actually legal, uh, um, what's the word? They're not actually legal enforcers. They can't necessarily enforce the law exactly. Um, they kind of between the two between the law and between brands and and yeah essentially they just they just throw fines at everyone uh so i did actually mention it to my local tesco and they were just like look if it, it, it happens all the time people drive through on the morning to school which is what i did i dropped my little one off at school and i drove back to pick her up at the end of the day and they clocked me going in but didn't clock me coming out then they didn't clock me going in but they did clock me coming out so they just went you were here for seven hours and it happens all the time apparently so they just throw fines everywhere because it's all about profit for them it's not about getting it right mm. so, so tesco's and co are just like nah me nah me if you need any if you need any help let us know we'll help you sort it out but i was like oh well, we'll see but now we don't anyway what you saying well if you don't challenge it then they've got free money haven't they well the word the thing you know that you, you, know that you were there but you know that you wasn't there for seven hours and it was it like 20 pound if you pay it within a week and then 80 pound if you don't yeah and that's that's the shit bit about it it's like if you if you pay this fine now we'll only charge you 20 pounds if you don't pay it in 14 days we will charge you 80 pounds so you're instantly thinking well i should pay it now because i don't want to spend four times the amount when i can just why do i want to spend 80 when i could just spend 20 um so, but then you're thinking, but, but I'm not guilty. I've not done anything. Why am I spending this money? So then you think, okay, well, if I spend it, then like uh, appeal, then I can get my money back. That way I've spent my 20 quid and there's no danger of spending the 80 quid. And then I'll get my 20 quid back. But then you read the fine print and it says, if you pay the money and appeal, even if your appeal is over to, uh, like, even if you win the appeal, you're not guaranteed to get your money back because you've spent it. And it's like, yeah. so it's basically, uh, also, it says you have to pay within 14 days to not pay 18, uh, 80 quid. But um, 
it will take them up to 30 days to respond to you. So so it's like, okay, well, I don't spend it. And if they don't take my appeal, they can still then charge me the full 80 quid. So it's kind of, it's strong arming you, as in, it's the fear of losing ex extra 60 quid. I mean, I just I just saw my ass instantly. I was like, I'm not giving you 20 quid, not spending 80 quid. I'm sending you this email now, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to link you to my fucking YouTube video <laughs> and my stream from the day just to show you. <laughs> so, yeah, at least we got an extra view out of it on the YouTube video. So, yeah! <laughs> Uh, Scorpio, thank you very much for the follow as well. Yeah, I did, I did call that one out. I don't know if you. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I wasn't listening then. Uh, oh, oh, David's been auto modded. Uh, I know, I've just seen that. It's the first time that I've seen that. Look, clearly doesn't like the word cunt. Uh, let's allow it. Uh, I do, though. <laughs> Approved. <laughs> hey. Um, <clears throat> okay, as Dad called them the cunt patrol when they tried getting Leaf parking in her works staff car park because she borrowed George's car. Yeah, that, that's it though. It's it, it, you're not you're not a person. You you're not even a number. You're just a financial income source. But anyway, that's a massive tangent. We don't need to talk about car packing stuff. We all know uh, that people have jobs to do, but some people are just greedy bastards with it. So here's what it is. Here's what it is. Um, we have one called Robins, and they have their monopoly. Yeah, I, I believe there's a few in the UK. Although when looking at Horizon Parking Limited, apparently there's even less restrictions and even more. No, what's the word I'm looking for? They have less influence in Scotland. They don't have great influence in the UK anyway because they're not a legal firm and they're not the car park owners. They're just a, an intermediate firm that tries to take all the money off you. But in Scotland, they have even less. So you can just, just go, no, nope, fuck off. <laughs> I'm not, not paying it. And they go, okay. So <laughs> I'm just looking at like... There's all sorts of stuff. So I was like, how uh, how, how to appeal? Uh, how can I blah, 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 search information to get back to them? And all the articles were like, Horizon Car Parking, do I have to pay if I'm in Scotland? <laughs> it's just, it, it's, everything was coming up, no, no, no. And then there was like web pages from Horizon going, well, technically you do. And it's like, no, it's like, okay. They, they've written that themselves. Yeah, exactly. That was, it was them that had written it as well. It was them trying to tell people, I forget the stuff that you're reading on the internet. You do have to pay us. No, no, we don't. No, we don't. Anyway, 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 anyway. Uh, speaking about paying, nice tedious link here. If you want to spend your money on stuff that isn't car parking fines, then you can spend it on games. Or, do you know what? You can get free games. Well, you can if you are on Epic Games anyway, which is a nice... I said nice, it was a bit tired, but we got there anyway. Tedious link finished. Sean Prescott for PC Gamer says, For a while, Epic Game Store will require two-factor authentication to claim free games. It may be too much for some. What? How, too much? But anyway, <laughs> I, I, get, I get it. It's a bit of a pain in the ass, two-factor authentication, but it's protecting you. Anyway, between now and May the 21st, claiming free games on the Epic Store will require two-factor authentication. According to Epic, the requirement is designed to encourage users to activate it voluntarily. Uh, and the quote in the article says, We are making this change in an effort to encourage our players to take steps to strengthen their Epic account security. Uh, the update reads, A notification will appear when a user clicks the Get button if they don't already have the security enabled. We understand that this is a minor inconvenience for some, but we want to provide the best possible solutions to protect your Epic account, it goes on. It's none of my business, really, but wherever two-factor authentication is often uh, offered, I reckon you should use it. It does make grabbing free games a more laborious process because it means you have to click a few more times than you normally would, or worse, you may need to pick up your smartphone. Dun, dun, dun. Too much yeah. clicking, too much handling of one smartphone. It can really get to you, but it may save your life, or more likely, your privacy. For the uh, For the King is currently free on the Epic Games Store with Amnesia, The Darkness Sent, and Crashlands to be made available from April 30th. That's tomorrow. Uh, mm -hmm. Thoughts, Bib? Uh, if you don't use two factor on anything that is available for, then you you really can't blame anyone else but yourself when your account in inevitably gets hacked because it will. Um, they always do. So if you haven't got two factor or anything, I've got it on as many things I could possibly. If there's a website that I've signed up to and it has two factor, then I am at 100. percent I would have signed up to it. Um, and I'm, I know I'm definitely leaving myself open here for people to be able to come and try and test that. But hopefully my <laughs> author on the, my phone will um, do the business for me. Um, but yeah, it's if you've got if it's there and it's available to use, absolutely use it. Um, I, I managed to get for the king last night. Um, I've I had two factor on Epic Games since I was able to sign up to Epic Games. So yeah, it's definitely something that you need to do. We, we featured a news article yesterday or the day before from Nintendo saying that if you have an old 3DS account, that the chances are you may have had some money taken from your account. 
Was it Smurf that was in here that had some money taken from his account? Uh, no, it was, was Connie. Connie Karai, she Connie, had three quid taken from her account. Yeah, so uh, it, it does happen. It will happen to you at some point. You will have money taken from your account in PlayStation, Xbox, Epic Games or something like that. If you don't have it, it's inevitable. Let's just hope that it's £3 or less like it happened to Connie. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it, it's it's a security procedure there for a reason. Use it. Please utilise it because you will be absolutely mortified when you find out that someone's got into your account, changed your password, bought a load of shit, and then you can never access your account again. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, yeah, it's I get it is a pain in the ass, particularly, I mean, w whenever I'm using uh, Twitch, for example, obviously we have the Ice Cream Uploads account, which is what we're streaming on. That's our Twitch partner account. As a Twitch partner, you have no option. You have to have 2FA. It's part, of, part and parcel of being a Twitch partner. Um, being random Joe Blogs, me, and my name's not actually Joe Blogs, it's a great name, that's just a phrase, chill out. Uh, but being me, like, so I, I have my own personal uh, Twitch Prime linked to my own account. Um, so whenever I see any sort of like Twitch Prime loot that's linked to my own personal gaming account, oh, I'll log in as that. I have to then log out as Ice Cream Uploads, log in as me, and because I'm logging in as me, uh, you, what I usually do is log in 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 an incognito tag so, uh, tab so i don't have to log out of ice cream uploads which then means that i then have to do that oh this is a new device that you've not logged in before because it's a, an incognito browser i then have to go into my emails and get the six digit codes or i can log out of ice cream uploads log in as myself log back in as ice cream uploads but because it's a part of the account i've got two factor off notification so i do get it it does it does just think oh for fuck's sake i just want to just get the free shit but yeah but it's it's I'm, a necessity. Oh yeah, I'm getting free shit to save money by having the two FA on. I'm also saving money potentially. I'm, well, it's not that I'm saving money; it's that I'm not losing money because I'm being protected. Uh, uh, Scorpio, yeah, it's three AM. I am so zombified right now. Three thirty. Oh, okay, wrong side of the. Oh, that's a wrong side of the Atlantic. Other side, not the wrong side. I mean, some could argue it's the, the right side. It certainly is for my diet anyway. Um, but yes, get some sleep. Get some. <laughs> uh, yeah. For something that's so easy to set up, something that's so easy to maintain, it's kind of it's a necessity. Just just protect yourself. Get used to it because the quicker you get used to it, the better it is for everyone. Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah, and if everyone has two FA, then then knobheads will just stop trying. <laughs> so so if you forget to have it on something, then it might you might get away with it because you know people just give up. Okay, now the one people are always going to try to take your money, but you, it's better to protect yourself. If there's an opportunity to uh, have a little bit more protection from the uh, the scum of the internet and you might as well turn it on mm -hmm. <clears throat> anyway let's move forward nice simple one two fa needed for epic games if you want to get access to the freest gear the freest games the newest free games on epic game store at least for the next month or so they do it they, they, they said they do do it in installments to encourage people to do it voluntarily so get used to turning two fa on not only can you continue to get free stuff, but you protect yourself. Moving forward, as I said, is uh, this next article written by Stefan Unliff at VG247. It says, Star Wars Battlefront 2's April content will be its last. So the upcoming update for Star Wars Battlefront 2 Battle on Scarif will be the last one released, according to DICE. DICE has announced that Battle on Scarif will be the last content updates for Star Wars Battlefront 2. And beyond the update, DICE said it will transition to support for the servers. It will still provide in-game challenges and recurring events for players. The team is just moving away from delivering, uh, delivering regular content updates. Set to release tomorrow, the update will bring the Age of Rebellion to Supremacy and instant action with battles on Hoth, Tatooine, Yavin 4, Death Star 2, and the world of Scarif. Scarif and crates will both be available in Heroes and Villains game modes, and Corp will see the MC85 Star Cruiser, First Order Star Destroyer, and Scarif added. New appearances include Rey and her lightsaber, Kylo Ren with his reforged mask, and Emperor Palpatine wearing his last, uh, latest set of robes. You can read more on the update through the blog post and look over the patch notes here. Uh, and then their final paragraph says earlier this month dice also announced one last content update will arrive in june for battlefield 5 after the summer update the base game will essentially go into maintenance mode but players can still expect events and activities to keep players busy so it's quite interesting and it starts to make me think ahead then so star wars battlefront 2's last content drop will be coming tomorrow in april Okay, that, that kind of makes sense. Star Wars Battlefront 2 has been out for, is it two years now? 
a year and yeah. a half I don't know, uh, quite a while let's put it that way um, Battlefront uh, no not Battlefront Battle Field Battlefield, that's the one. There's too many battles. I remember when it was like there was Battlefront, Battlefield, Battle Tanks, Battle Toads, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> all going on at the same time. I was like, what? Uh, but yeah, Battlefield uh, has also been out. The miss, uh, the missing a release this year. So that's their two titles that usually kind of like uh, dance around each other. Both of them have now finished. So what what is next, and what is gonna be? Uh, What's going to be the future? Are we are we going to continue with the one, the other, one, the other, Battlefront, Battlefield, Battlefront, Battlefield, or, or are we going to see them just kind of like, okay, we're slowing down on Battlefront, we're slowing down on Battlefield, um, yeah, where do they go? What are your thoughts, Pip? Battlefield will be an absolute necessity going into the new console cycle, um, which doesn't surprise me. I think we featured an article either early on this week or late last week about. The, the same thing happening with Battlefield. They was going to release one more, uh, one more chapter uh, in their timeline, and then that will be it. They will be looking to move on to Battlefield Six. Battlefield Six will potentially sell more than Battlefront, purely because of the Battlefront scenario that we had at the beginning of the life cycle, like the loot box. Uh, the the loot box story completely hindered their launch because people just didn't want to pick it up because of the shit that was going on with it um so I, I probably think that the battlefield element will take precedence over out of their side it 100 will um so it doesn't surprise that they're both starting to slow down now so they can move more resources onto getting battlefield right and getting it out the door as soon as possible uh with playstation 5 and xbox series one x uh launches later on this year or early next year christ knows when um <laughs> So yeah, it's it's it doesn't surprise me, but I'll be interested to see when we get another Battlefront. I think we'll probably get one in about two years' time, after the the first or maybe second chapter of Battlefield Six gets released. Um, I don't think they'll be in any hurry to get a new Battlefront out the door. I do think they managed to bring back the audience because they're, they're seeing a massive uh, the massive spike in sales when the new uh, well the latest Star Wars film came out and they brought out what was it called the Champions Pack or something like that Celebration Edition Celebration Edition that was it yeah and they added more content to it so they, they brought people back with that update and made more people take notice of Battlefront I mean even Lee in the office he never even wanted to play it until that uh, Celebrations Pack came out um, so yeah it, uh, people did want to pick this game up and I was considering it at one point um, so yeah, they did bring people back in to get into the Battlefront world. Um, do I think it's enough at the moment to warrant taking everybody off Battlefront 2 and making a new one straight away? Probably not. I do think the Battle Battlefield is the stronger IP from them, um, so it makes sense to get them out the door, especially if it's going up against Call of Duty, because we all know Call of Duty will be going, um, going full pace to try and get a game out uh, when the new console comes out. I find it quite, quite interesting, um, because with all of the might and all of the money that EA have, I just don't feel like they've fully nailed it on uh, a first-person shooter for a long, long time. I mean, other people may have different opinions. If you do, feel free to drop it in the chat. I mean, I regularly talk about Battlefield Bad Company 2, Xbox 360 generation, and midway through, so not even toward the end of it, um, as being one of the best shooters of all time. And I don't think I've played another EA made shooter that has hit that level of quality. I mean, when I say quality, I mean everything considered at that point in time. Obviously games are, are better technically, but um, they've not had the, the same level of like complete package that that game had. I mean, we've had the likes of Battlefield 2s and 3s and 1s and fours or fives and and there's been obviously we won't really mention in the same breath but medal of honor games and so on and then we had i mean tell, tell a lie star wars battlefront i really really enjoyed from the multiplayer perspective it was it was flawed there was no single player um it came out at the same time as uh star wars episode seven uh the force awakens and and there wasn't really any sort of tie into that. I, at the same time, I remember John Boyega tweeting about the game, saying, I, "I love the fact that 
this game's here. The audio it, in it is amazing. And I remember, I remember at that point in time, I didn't have my uh, hashtag spawn, uh, GT Omega chair. I had an X Rocker gaming chair that had speakers built in it. I remember sitting in back in the chair and just having like the Star Wars theme tune, duh, 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 duh. and it was amazing. And then you throw in things like thermal detonator mines, which just go like the Star Wars, boom, bang, kind of like stupidly loud explosions, and it was ridiculously good. The game was well balanced. I mean. Uh, Although, to be fair, I did jump on it at Christmas. It came out in September, so I jumped in after it had had a lot of its nerfs and buffs, and it was balanced. But it was. It was really, really good. Um, not perfect, like I said. No single player, no tie-ins. So, yeah. gameplay was good. Not the perfect package. You fast forward to Star Wars Battlefront 2. I've mentioned it before many times. I'll mention it again. I got the Deluxe Stormtrooper Edition because I liked the first one so much, even though it was flawed. And the second one was horrendous I mean, it's, it's good now maybe saying it's good now a celebration edition all the content leading up to that fixed what was what was what was pants uh so they, they built it into a good package too late it was too late but like with all of that what what do we expect ea to nail it for the next gen because they're the, the pausing now on uh future development for battlefront and Battlefield, both titles within the last month or so have uh, have had announcements saying, okay, we are stopping now, there will be no more further content. We will keep supporting the game in terms of quality of life to server improvements and make sure your matchmaking and all the stuff behind the scenes works. That's, in video game terms, that's the same as saying, look, we've done all we can, we're gonna put you on live support now, and then we'll let you finish naturally. That's essentially what it is. Uh, uh, so, yeah. They've given up on the, on those games. They're moving on to the, what they can uh, work on. What it, I don't know. Do we think? What do we think in the chat? Do we think it's going to be Battlefront or do we think it's going to be Battlefield? Um, I think Bibbs is right. I think I think the Battlefront, uh, the Battlefield focus is probably where it's going to be. Also, be, uh, the part of the reason I say that is because um, uh, Bibbs made a good point going into the new generation they want to launch with that but there's no more star wars content star wars was based around the films as well there was a star wars film every other year uh, essentially so we got uh episode seven then we got rogue one then we got episode eight and then we got solo and then we got episode nine kind of thing they were trying to base it around the at least the major releases of star wars there's no more star wars content scheduled in for the foreseeable so i think that's maybe where they go okay we've we've had uh the battlefront games we've had fallen order we don't have anything else in the pipeline right now so let's just let's just shelve everything and then just put focus on battlefield yeah uh just jump into the chat bacon chin right i'm off boys streaming at 1 p.m if you fancy saying hello feel free to uh, check out bacon chin if you're in the chat by the way bacon chin drops in each and every single day and as i just mentioned he will be streaming this afternoon so feel free to drop him a follow that would be very nice he's a good man he's a good man um uh but much uh, Madge saying, Battlefront 2 narrowly lives longer than Battlefield 5. DICE will be full on supporting EA with FIFA 21 for engine issues. Is that confirmed? Interesting. Interesting. Although for the company, they need a long break and repair their disastrous recent games. Repair their reputation, I mean. Well, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, it's not been a good track record, has it? Says Bacon Chin. Uh, Madge says, DICE's rep has been trending down for a long number of years now. Um, uh, and then back to David says, me and my mates preferred Battlefield 2. It was always a uh, a go-to game until the servers were shut down and we still jump on anything that tried to spoof the servers and we played all except Battlefield 5 um, I mean I, I, I quite like Battlefield 5 it's a decent enough game but that's it, it's a decent enough game I quite like it, it's decent enough I don't love it, mm. I've not had the best times ever playing it but I have enjoyed it, it's just like it's, it's, it's a good solid game but it just doesn't have every it just doesn't excel, doesn't excite me not like Warzone probably Warzone. I don't love Warzone. I like Warzone a lot. I like it more than Battlefield, um, but it just doesn't have it. it it's, it's not even Modern Warfare Remastered for me. That that was the perfect rounded package where you can play different ways and everything's rewarding. <clears throat> Those games, yeah, for whatever reason, we won't go into whatever it is. But uh, yes, Battlefront Two. In short, he's getting no more updates. I just realised the time, and I realised that we have to be off by twelve. So let's fast forward. Let's fast forward. Um, let me just minimise this. I'm bringing up our next news article, which is a nice, nice one to finish on. Is that the UK games industry will be giving eighty-five thousand 
free games to NHS workers. I'll say that again. The UK games industry will give 85,000 free games to NHS workers. Written by Andy Robinson for VGC. The article says, Games for Carers is the work of UK trade body, UK and VGC writer Chris Scullion. So the UK games industry has launched a new initiative to provide NHS workers with a free game or game subscription. The Games for Carers website allows NHS staff to securely claim their free game or subscription by entering their NHS email address. More than 85,000 free games are available across a wide range of genres, age ratings and platforms. The initiative was conceived by VGC writer Chris Scullion and executed by UK Trade Body UK with the support of major games companies such as EA, Codemasters, Konami, Jagex, Sega, Media Molecule, Xbox and Team17. It's hoped Games for Carers will provide frontline staff an opportunity to unwind with a video game when they got, uh, get some well-earned downtime or to provide relief for their families. Journalist Chris Scullion told VGC he, he came up with the idea for Games for Carers when one of his Twitter followers gave him a spare code a uh, spare game code to give away. Someone suggested giving it to an NHS worker and I thought that was a great idea, but I ended up getting three or four NHS workers asking to claim it, he explained. I thought, wouldn't it be great to get codes for a bunch of NHS workers instead of just one? So I reached out to my contacts in the games industry to see if any of them had any spare codes that I could pass on. I ended up getting in touch with the UK and at that point, the idea grew arms and legs in the best way. With UK able to reach out to its contacts and key mail offering to help out with distribution, we're now looking at around 85,000 codes available when the site launches on Wednesday with more on the way should they be needed. The UK's Creative Industries Minister, Caroline Dinanich, uh, said she was delighted to see the NHS supported in such an innovative way. And there's the full list of uh, games companies that are taking part. GG's to all of those. I'm obviously not going to run through that list, but our NHS, uh, our resume, <laughs> words start again. Our amazing NHS staff are working hard on the front line in the fight against coronavirus. And it's brilliant to see the UK's video games industry uniting to say thank you through this campaign. We have worked closely with games companies to help keep people safe, and I am delighted the sector is continuing to support the NHS in such an innovative way. Dr. Joe Twist, CEO of UK, said the UK games industry has been proud to play its part in conveying these vital public health messages during this national emergency. Now, our community has united again to say thank you to the truly extraordinary people who make up the NHS frontline team. Games companies of all sizes and players everywhere recognise their exceptional dedication and hope this initiative goes somewhere to help them to understand how respected and valued they are. The UK government has previously partnered with, the logic, with local game developers to promote COVID-19 health messaging within games. That's nice. That is. I'm glad that we read that one last because we usually it's just negative news all the time, but this is massive massive news for uh well for everyone really um it's it's good to look after our nhs staff who are doing an unbelievable job um in keeping people alive because that's essentially what it is at the moment um well that's what hospitals tend to do anyway <laughs> um but ggs for chris actually reaching out and getting this off the ground uh really nice guy and this is definitely showing it <laughs> yeah absolutely it's, it's nice to see and I, the bit that i kind of liked within that as well is um i mean i don't know anything about how to redeem the codes within this but uh i can't find the exact bit but it was basically saying it's nice to provide a little bit of escapism or relief for nhs workers or their families and i think that's kind of the key thing is most people will think oh it's, it's an nhs worker it's that 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 woman that leaves the family and goes to work and, and is a nurse or a doctor or or, or whatever and, and then comes back and she's the nhs worker and no nhs workers are the household even though the the, the kids and and the partner um or or not partner whatever um aren't going to hospital uh they're also still dealing with that situation so so it's it's not just the escapism for the doctor themselves or the nhs worker themselves it's it could be just something to provide enough of a distraction for the kids so that the kids have, have a little bit of happiness and then nhs worker could just sit on the couch with a brew i mean maybe, maybe the nhs workers think yeah fuck yeah i want to tear shit up and do man yeah. <laughs> but but i mean if, if they do absolutely go for it but it's the fact that that it's that it's it's the escapism for either one or for all it, if team 17 are involved the whole family could be sat there playing a little bit of overcooked but well whether you want to play overcooked to de-stress or not is questionable <laughs> it's an amazing game but it's the most stressful game in the world uh so but if, whatever whichever way it's used it's it's really good and i like to see things like this 
Could be like what Madge said. I hope it's not a surgeon simulator. <laughs> <laughs> just imagine, just imagine, or play Gink. <laughs> oh yeah, none of that, none of that. Um, I'm just going to look at quick look at the list. I did skip past it, but it's nice to see. So obviously, the article called out the likes of EA, Codemasters, Konami, Jagex, Media Molecule, Xbox, Team Seventeen, huge, huge names. But it's nice to see that alongside. Quack Quack Games. I've never heard of Quack Quack Games, but do you know what? Fair play. High res heard of, and there's loads of other brands within their curve digitals and stuff that I've heard of. Um, uh, Bossa Studios, another one heard of, but then it's nice to see those against uh, next to 101 XP and 1939 games. I've never heard of those, so it, so it shows you how how good the games industry is when you've got uh, little brands, little indie studios like that sitting alongside Xbox in their. Uh, in their quest to look after the people that look after us it's, it's good to see it's good to see it's good to see and on that bombshell we will wrap things up a nice nice story to finish on uh so if you know anyone in your family or friend circle that is working hard for the nhs then please feel free to tell them that if they play video games or if anyone in their house plays video games yuki um which is uk ie uh and uh, key mailer are partnering together uh, partnering together even to give free games so if if you know anyone please feel free to mention to them that you know you use use their opportunity use their email address to get themselves some free stuff is steph using it good question uh, i haven't actually asked my sister is an nhs worker so that's a good shout i will i will mention it to her uh we'll check but on that bombshell we are gonna finish things off for the day obviously we've mentioned if you were here for the start of the show we aren't staying uh, sticking around for some gameplay stuff today because bibi has got adult stuff to be on with and by that i mean yeah. i mean dodgy films not that live stuff you know what he's like absolutely uh but we will be back tomorrow probably with some uh, post stream uh, post post scoop uh, gameplay stuff as well so if you want to see some modern master league content jump in then we are gearing up for the launch of our fully fledged modern master league series which looks like it will be taking it's finally taking place finally starting on monday so make sure make sure you check in tomorrow to see what the uh, ml's looking like and then if you want to see it all fully take off monday is when we're going to do things uh but we are going to disappear today we will be back we will be back at 10 a.m tomorrow but before we do that anything you want to add babe apart from my inability to speak <laughs> <laughs> yes if you do see any video game news knocking around the social media platform of your choice then do feel free to get in contact with myself which is at we've got with Benio, at grey underscore day and most importantly at ice cream uploads will take your thoughts and opinions on the matter add our thoughts and opinions on the very next show which will be our what time tomorrow mr graham day am 10 a um, te ish, well, ish, ten am ish, ish, ish. ish. <laughs> but anyway, make sure you have yourselves a lovely day. The weather's a bit shit, so maybe, maybe don't go outside. Grab yourself a nice brew. If you're an NHS worker, download yourself a free game. And if you're not an NHS worker, then just play the games that you've got. Have yourselves a very lovely day. And before I say the last word, uh, we are going to raid someone just after this this stream. We're going to jump straight into someone's chat. Feel free to drop any uh, recommendations down below. If not, we will just pick someone from our follow list, someone that we know, friends of the channel. But whether you do that or not, have yourselves a lovely day. And remember... Stay frosty! <laughs> just see whether you can do this. I didn't know if there was lag or something. I don't know. If it... <laughs> there we go. We've got the chat. Stay frosty! <laughs>